19 years ago, in May, my husband came back home. We were both practicing medicine in Joss. And he came back home and said he wants to go and pray. He has a leading to pray. He feels that he's at a junction. And he left to some mountainous areas in the Joss environs, Ghana Rock. He was there for three days. No food, no water in God's presence. But when he left the house, I told myself, I saw his eyes, and this is a serious matter today. So I advised myself to also take a fast and ask God what he has in store for us so that I'm not absolutely taken by surprise. And amazingly, when he came back after three days, the first thing he said is, what did God tell you? And I went, it was you that was going to go and pray. Supposing I hadn't prayed. Fortunately, I had taken the time to pray and we both had parchments. We had books that we wrote what we had received in. And he said, you read yours first. So I brought it out and read what God told us, told me. And he said, amazing. And then brought out his book and read it. It was virtually, do I say, word for word. And so the confirmation to leave just come to Abuja to start this work was confirmed. And a few weeks later, he left Joss with a bag. We called it, it was interesting, we called it the first missionary journey. He had nowhere he was going to sleep. He had nothing, in, he knew virtually nobody. He had a strange address of somebody that was in Guagualada. He thought Guagualada and Abuja were all the same, because that's what you think when you are not in Abuja. And he got here, stepped on the ground in this territory, and as he was crossing the road in a prophetic action, someone that was in the school with us in Joss across the road said, called him by name. He said, what are you doing here? Would you like to come with me to our house? We have a small place we are staying. It was really a small place. He said, I have somewhere I'm going to in Guagualada. The guy said, ah, Guagualada is about 45 minutes to one hour from here. So, as God was part of this great work from day one, he went there. Few weeks later, the first outreach. Few weeks later, the next month, the next outreach. And then the third outreach was what led into the church service on Sunday. God has been awesome. God has been gracious. God has been faithful. I remember that place where that young man took him to. Sleeping there. One big room. I don't know how many people sleep in that place, slept in that place every day. If you found a corner behind a chair on the ground, then you made yourself comfortable and slept till morning. It was amazing. I remember Meshai joints at a Sokoro junction. You stop there and drink the Meshai. This is a married man with his wife. They could cook any kind of food they wanted to eat, but they had to drink Meshai on some nights because they were out on the Lord's assignment. It was a most amazing thing. But one of the things that stands out very clearly to me is it. We, were, we are not more excited now than we were then. We were excited being in the center of his will, in the center of his purpose, in the center of his plan. We were excited that God could find us available and useful for him to use for his purpose. This morning, there is an anointing that is in the house that is going to empower you to do what it is that God wants you to do in life and destiny. If you are a believer, you shout a loud amen. Please take your seat for a minute. I had encounters with the Lord. I said it on 
on Saturday. God's servant, Pastor Iyadebo, was in Utuko then, 78 and 79. A young man, we came up, but like young men, we just got influenced away again and just sl slacked down. But in the high institution in 1986, my life was going in a particular direction. And one night of the 12th of May of 1986, around 2 a.m., my heart was beating so fast. And I had some, I think, a visitation. And the voice told me, if you die now, where are you going? I said, I don't know where I'm going. He said, but you can know now. Long story made short, within two hours, between 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., I rededicated my life to Christ, gave myself over to God in that 1986. It was on the campus, and I began to look for which fellowship, and um, I had a brother, I have a brother, who is still a member of Deeper Life Church here today, and I remember that how he has invited us to Deeper Life several times. And then I looked forward to Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. And I went to the Campus Fellowship, cleaned the chairs before the others arrived, and then stood outside and began to usher people who were old members of the, of the fellowship. And they were looking at me wondering, which old usher is this? And this was my first time. I ushered them all in and then became a very fervent member of the Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. We will, we, will, we will take buses from the campus to the church in town every Sunday. I became a member of the Deeper Life Choir. I, I was involved here, involved there. And I'm saying all this to let us know that some people think that when they see a person, he just happened. No, sir. We have a history. We have a history. We didn't just happen. When you see me stand with intensity and speak on holiness and speak on righteousness and speak on character, speak on integrity, speak on consecration, speak on sanctification, there is somewhere a root from where it came. It, there's no way it can live. I tell people, I said, the challenge we have in our generation today is that many ministers just came into the gospel without the foundation of holiness, character, sanctification. They just met the prosperity gospel in the middle. And as a result of that, there is so much that is going on. And what you don't know, you can't tell another person. Where you have not been through, you cannot pass another through. And that has been my encounter. We went all the way to IBTC, your boy in Lagos, for campus fellowships and campus retreats and so on and so forth. And these are formative things that built our lives and will remain with us permanently. And we are grateful. And I am glad to let you know also that I was in the deeper life Bible church choir in the Otuko church. And the pastor of that church is here now. 86, Pastor Chris Obaji, please can you come? This was my 86 pastor, Deeper Life Bible Church. He was a psychiatry nursing officer, part time, and then ministry. And full time. A word of greeting, sir. Praise the Lord! I'm the happiest to be here tonight. Because what this man of God is saying is just the truth and the truth. The foundation was very solid under the ministry of our Father and the Lord. Terry gift to this generation is a man of vision. He loves wife too who is also my sister is a gift that god has given to us i want to say what god is doing is marvelous in our eyes and like the ambition say the greater to come god will take you higher 
the glory of his name and be our portion in Jesus. Let your foundation be so solid and you can see how God has helped him and the wife and the family and the entire ministry and we are seeing this as the Lord's doing. And God is going to bring millions of souls into his kingdom through this ministry in the name of Jesus. My earnest prayer is that as you come here, don't just come here to just see side. You dedicate your life to Christ. The Lord wants to use you as he's using them. And I want to assure you, this day is a remarkable day. and going to be a turning point that you can never forget in your life in Jesus' name. We give all the glory to the Lord. God bless. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. 21 says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages wow without end amen this morning god is about to do for somebody exceeding abundantly above all you can think or imagine in the name of jesus christ it has been a journey a journey of faith absolute faith in god it has been a journey number two of absolute trust in God. It has been a journey of refusal to look to any man. Refusal to look to any human being as source or support. To look to anybody at the detriment of looking up to God. It has been a journey of vision. Vision. Rugged vision. It has been a journey of dogged focus. Don't get focused. I can tell you that in 19 years, I can count on my fingertips the number of Sunday services that, that, that the, the senior pastor has missed in this commission. It, it is countable on your fingertips. Don't get focused. Anywhere he is in the world, he must be back here because there is something that he's running with. There is a focus. There is a commitment. And today, God is about to give you an impartation of these qualities in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand for the set man over this ministry as they receive fresh blessing tonight for the dawn of a new day. Hallelujah. Please help me stretch forth your hands in this direction. Proclaim any blessing in your heart over this great ministry. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Zerush aneprake nakotazia. Razezori ali shige. Emproto soda. M protozoda Nekato Naterwa In Jesus' precious name. As you are anointed tonight and hand laid on you, I decree the dawning of a new day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. As hand is laid on you tonight, I decree the dawning of a new day. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Fresh oil, new dawn, new beginning, fresh grace. In the name of Jesus. The wisdom to move to the next phase is imparted on you tonight. Amen. That wisdom flows freely without hinder. Amen. And I use as point of contact that the same grace flows down the leadership. Amen. That everyone that is connected to driving this mandate Amen. comes under the same flow. Amen. All the pastors, all the ordained workers, 
everyone that is a part of this great world flows under the same anointing. No dryness, no stagnation, no frustration, everything going at divine pace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It has been a journey of continuous sacrifice. It is sacrifice for a young medical doctor to uproot himself from a flourishing practice and uproot his young wife, a medical doctor as well, with a little baby of about one year old and move to a place they knew not where they are going to sleep. We lived in a boy's quarters one room for 30 months. In that time, a whole building was built for God. A church auditorium that could take 700 people and above built. But the emphasis was not on where to live, was not on where to sleep. The emphasis was on ensuring that the work of the Lord was propagated. And we were happy to live in that boy's quarters. We left three bedroom flats where we were living. We, we were entitled, each one, both of us were entitled to three bedroom flats each in the two places we were working. We left it till today. We were never able to get our furniture back. We were never able to get our medical books back. We had to buy a whole new set of medical books. We could never get anything that we left there. And God did not look and despise that sacrifice. Today, the unction for a sacrificial lifestyle is coming upon somebody in the name of Jesus. Sacrifice of time. Take your seat. Sacrifice of resources. Sacrifice of money. Every money we came into this town with was used on the work of God. It was used on the assignment of God and it has been a continuous life of sacrifice. But above all, brothers and sisters, it has been a life, a story, a journey of grace. Grace. God's grace. Great grace. Unusual favor. Unmerited favor. God's mercy. God's help. Today, that mercy shall be made available to you here. You don't seem to understand what I'm saying. That mercy shall be made available to you today. That grace shall be made available to you today. What is it you are trusting God for in your life? Today, God shall do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. If you are a believer, you jump up on your feet and shout a loud day. Lift up your hands and your voice to God this morning. I want you to pray, Lord, start something new in my life. That new thing, if he has already started something new in your life, that new thing you started in my life, Lord, you will complete it. Jesus is the Alpha. He will be the Omega. If you let him do it, he will do it for you. He's the Alpha. He will be the Omega. You are going to ask God today, Father, the grace, Father, what it takes. Oh Lord, I look up to you today. Father, I trust you today. Lord, I look up to you this morning. Let us take a Oh God, I ask that you usher me into that new beginning, into that new thing that you want to do through my life, into that new um, dispensation that you want to bring me to in your life. Let in life. In the name of Jesus, as I was just praying, the Holy Spirit led me to tell somebody that you wish God could help you with such speed and such progress in life. As we are praying, somebody said, how I wish my wife and I or my husband and I could walk together like this in unity. I stand here today in the name of Jesus to declare that the help of God is coming upon your life. 